Okay, so this is a comic book illustration that was commissioned by a fan of mine who's a fan of the TV series The Flash. And the character, hoping that she's beautiful looking, her name is called Killer Frost. And she has these basic special powers where she's able to conjure up ice chips and snow and freeze things. And of course, she has this blue motif around her and the blue lips and the blue eyes, striking blue eyes. Anyway, this is the finished product that's going to go to my customer friend. But what I often get asked at Comic-Cons and everything is how I put something like this together. So I'm not going to be able to replicate this exactly for you, but I thought I'd spend this video showing you some of the techniques that I use to put something like this together. So this is the finished product, but the way I usually start out is, of course, with a blank piece of white paper. And what will usually come first, because I love working traditionally, and traditionally meaning that I like drawing by hand. A lot of people these days love using digital art, and that's very cool. I enjoy, you know, seeing the amazing results that people get with that. But I like working by hand and feeling, you know, my hand on the paper and transferring, you know, my own thoughts to it, being able to fix some mistakes. So during this video, again, I'm going to show you how some of these techniques that I use to put this together come to be a completed drawing. So what I'll start out doing is with a just a basic pencil and start doing a rough sketch of it. And what comes next is a process that you're going to see here, which is the finished inked product. So after I lay down the pencils, I go over it with a brush, uh, an ink brush. So this, there's all kinds of different styles for you to use. I happen to be using sort of a, a Pigma brush here. It's basically just a plain brush pen. And a lot of the techniques that people use, when you can use one of these brushes, if you're very careful with it, you can get, you know, a very thin hairline line, or depending on the pressure that you put on the brush, you can get a little bit of a thicker line. And, you know, you can get a little bit of a variety of, of thicknesses that way. It just depends on how lightly or how strongly you push down on the brush. Now you can get, you know, the same sort of results by using, uh, for inking, basically a simple Sharpie, you know, and a Sharpie you can use, and depending on, you know, the dexterity of your hand and your skill level, you know, you can use a Sharpie to do some coloring techniques or some of the inking. And one thing I ironically found was that a simple Crayola pen, no, you don't use it for a real commission piece of work, but maybe doing some sketching. But a Crayola pencil or ink will also give you, you know, a variation of lines where you can basically just very quickly draw something like this. So we're going to do, you know, a very quick eye right there. So you see how I drew that? in there and you'll put maybe a couple of lines around the outside of that. So you can get that kind of technique with even something as simple as a Crayola pen. But I'm going to do this professionally. So again, we want to get all the variations of lines that's going to go into this finished product. And then we're going to have this final, final inked stage before we go to some of the coloring techniques that I'll use on this particular drawing as well. So, starting out with this brush, you start laying down your line in a very simple, simple sort of brush technique here. I'm doing this very quickly, but I'm going to show you, you know, exactly how I laid it down for the final drawing. So, this will give you a sense of what you can do with a brush. And when you're doing eyes, this, so I'm laying down the iris of the eye around it, and you often want to leave maybe a little bit of a reflection of a white area there to show that there's some reflection hitting the eyelid, or hitting the iris rather. And then you can take the brush and just sort of flick it like this. 
like almost like you're flicking away a fly or something like that and maybe put a little bit of thickness in this area here and over the top you can flick again just very light brush strokes a lot of my inking technique came from reading a lot of comic books and when there were so many different inkers working for the various comic book companies and amazing inkers um, one of the ones that influenced me the most is a Marvel veteran anchor named Joe Sinnott, who, when another anchor, or rather penciler, would lay down the pencils, uh, he would come along and then render it in his style, his own unique style, as many anchors have, and go over the pencils. And some people think, some people who don't know comic books very well think, well, that's just tracing over somebody else's artwork. It's far from tracing. What you're doing is you're complementing that person's work and adding your own style to it. So you see how I've very quickly, you know, just with a brush and this pen here that has one solid line, we've been able to make, and I'm putting a little bit of the striations here for the eye. And here we have, I'll put a few bits of detail here and again flicking with various degrees of pressure and whatnot and there we have you know very quickly an eye a woman's eye so that's how I would lay down the inks for that so I'm going to show you now how that worked on this portion of the drawing here whoops slid down a little bit there there are little accidents that take place when you're doing some drawing so we'll make that stay up there a little bit so I've got the brush here now so I'm gonna take the brush and again I would you know maybe make this very bold a lot of the time you can see that there's a bold line around her face a bold line rather than the thinner ones in the background you want to make the object have a little bit of a bolder stroke in the front that makes the piece of artwork stand out a little bit more so that it's closer to you and it stands apart from a lot of the the background stuff so you know I will take this brush and we're gonna make her eyebrows a very deep jet black like right there and I might add a little bit more of eyelashes there and maybe make underneath her eye a little bit stand out a little bit more on that side and maybe over on this side just a little bit there now I didn't have this in the finished piece but let's say you know the fabric of her her costume has a little bit of wrinkles in it that would happen with any sort of fabric so I'm just you know using little strokes here to denote a little bit of wrinkling and a little bit of you know bunching of the fabric there and I can do the same over here and let's say I want to add maybe another tuft of hair coming down her face so I'll start right here very very lightly very lightly with a light touch as light as I can do it and then with some additional pressure you know bring it up here and I'll go over it maybe a time or two just to smooth it out a little bit. And then I'll start here at the tip again and press down. And I'm just going to bring this to a little bit of a sharper point there. So you see how we've added now, you know, another tuft of hair coming down her face. And maybe I want to make this shadow over here by the neck or the collar a little bit bolder. So I'll start very, very lightly and then press down and a little bit lightly again, make that come to a point and make these all blend together right about there. Um, same with this area over here. Maybe I want to make some more of the, the costume have a little bit more of a, of a wrinkle effect coming right about there. So, Again, you just take the brush here, you lay it down. I might even add, just to give you a sense once again, 
of how you can get a very, very light touch. I'm going to add one more tuft of hair very lightly. And then you make it go up. And then one more going this way. And then adding a little bit more pressure where it gets a little bit thicker as it gets closer to the full head of hair. So there we've got, you know, maybe three separate locks of hair coming around. So that's where we start with the inking process there. So getting back to now, you know, the color version here, and you can see how I had the little lock of hair done that way and the bolder lines on her shoulders and around the shoulders here and for the costume. But now we've got to start putting in some of the color. So in laying down the color, you want to probably put down a basic, basic coat of using markers like these. Some people use Copic markers or that uh, their brand, this one happens to be another professional marker that uh, one uses. Um, so let's say for her costume, we'd lay down, you know, a very basic undercoating, if you will, right here. And then to add a little bit more texture and shading to it, we'll take a colored pencil, Prismacolor colored pencil in this case, and I'm going to start a little bit darker and ever so lightly, you know, blend it out like this. And you can do the same, you know, with, I'll show you with the hair color. We'll lay down, you know, a light, a very pale tone of yellow right there, and then take a different shade. I've chosen something called Goldenrod and you'll sort of brush that very, very carefully that way. So now I'll apply this to, once again, our original drawing, which again, that keeps sliding down, but uh, we'll move this out of the way. So we're gonna try this now in the actual drawing. So I'm gonna be pretty careful here because this is, the kinds of inks that one uses when you're doing a commission like this, you want to use waterproof inks that are permanent and waterproof. This is a basic um, copy that was done at a copy center. So the black lines that you're seeing here aren't exactly waterproof. So if I take this marker over it, it's going to smudge and sort of give it a muddy kind of look. So I'm just doing some of the highlighting here. I'll use this area down here where there's not a whole lot of lines in the way. So first we'll lay in this basic undercoat here. And you can even leave some white areas as well that give sort of a highlight where the, the light is shining on her hair and giving it that bright um, reflective sort of look. So I've laid down everything with the inks beforehand. They've thoroughly dried. So I've laid a few bits of color there on her hair. Now I'll take my secondary color and I'm going to go over it a bit. Oh wait, this is the same color. Let me get the other one. So here's the secondary color and that's going to add, you know, a little bit more depth, a little bit more texture to it, a little bit of a variation of color as well. So you're seeing, you know, almost different layers of her hair coloring. And, you know, I'll continue this all throughout the hair. So let's say we're going to do the lips. Well, we'll focus on the lips right now. So I'm going to take that, that lighter color of blue. Uh, as it happens, this is kind of a, almost like a frost blue, if you will. Very, very light one. Actually, this is not the one I wanted. I wanted this one, which is frost blue for the Killer Frost character. And even though I've used the wrong color there uh, initially, we're going to be able to fix that. I didn't really ruin it by any means. So you're laying down this very light coat on her lips, which is going to be our base color and giving it a sense of, you know, some blue shading here. 
and we're going to carry this all the way around. So now, you know, she does have blue lips, but there's really not a sense of, of depth to do it to it at all. And I might even put a little bit of the blue over here, running a little bit out of the, the blue color. But I think we have enough here just, you know, to give you a sense of what I'm trying to do. So we've got the blue lips there, but they really don't look like they're standing out at all. So then you'll take one of your blue colored pencils and you can use, you know, whatever shade that you feel is fit for whatever it is that you're trying to create. So now I'm taking the blue and I'm adding some texture, some, some shading and some shadowing to certain areas to make the lips have sort of a roundish, you know, the roundish, yeah, definitely sort of luscious look that you want um, on this sort of character's lips. So I'm going to put underneath here, you always want to be aware of, you know, kind of where your light source is coming this way. So underneath here, the blue is going to be a little bit darker because that's also going to be kind of like a shadowy area. And then over here, we'll add some of the blue under here. And we'll blend it on this lip. And making sure to go around the lip all the way this way. And you just keep working this until, you know, you feel that you've got it exactly the way that you want it to be, really. Um, and you can mix a whole variety of other colors as well. Um, you know, depending on what your imagination is working on, no matter what your your creation, your creativity is going to be asking for you to make. So now, all right, you see now we've got a little bit more shape, a little bit more depth here. And I can do the same down here on this bluer area here. So, you know, I'll start out with a deeper, deeper sort of yellow, uh, blue line here around the edge of where the piping is on her costume. And then I'll very, very carefully sort of have it blend out a little bit. And I think I'm going to leave a little bit of a highlight. So where this is sort of a shiny kind of costume that she's wearing. Let's say it's uh, not spandex, because a woman of her stature would not wear cheap spandex. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's leather. So, you know, I want to have a little bit of an area where the light is reflecting off of it. So I'll make it, it darker here. And going around, you know, her bosom here. And then right up here around the piping a little bit darker. But then I'm going to ease up on the pressure on the colored pencil. And the colored pencil is going to give it a sense of leaving this area almost letting the paper and the white underneath show through. And you can see now how we have sort of a leathery kind of look or at least, you know, a glossy kind of look there. So, all right, so there we have the costume, but now we come to a part where, all right, we're going to add some color to her skin. So I'm going to use both of these shoulders to make this point. So I'm going to take, again, a lighter shade of various flesh tones, and they come in a variety of them. Of course, everybody's flesh tone is definitely different, and... Uh, you know, it depends on what kind of character you're working on, um, you know, what ethnicity they may be. And so I'm going to, with this shoulder over here, and I think what I'm going to do is there'll be a light source hitting this. So I'm going to leave a little bit of white space from the paper showing through because that's going to be where there's going to be a highlight hitting her shoulder. A little bit of... Um, reflection, if you will. And so we fill in this bottom part here with our marker. I'm trying to go at a pretty quick pace of speed. I'd normally take, you know, a lot more time and a lot more care 
in terms of of coloring this but since this is a quick tutorial I don't want to spend too much time so I colored that in I colored this area here also in but I left a little bit of light or white from the paper showing through because I want to use that as sort of a highlight for uh, the the light hitting her skin so then I'll take another shade that's a bit deeper around the same color hue but a little deeper and darker to make A little bit of variation in the skin tone and just like I let the white show through there I'm, I'm still gonna let a little bit of the undercoat show through on that one on that shoulder and then over here I'm going to just go around the edges of her shoulder to again give it you know a rounder kind of feel around a roundness to her shoulder there right so you can see how there's you know a couple of different tones going on here so the last part that I would do is then take another sort of colored pencil uh, one that I like to use for flesh tones and I'm going to sort of use it to blend these colors together so that even though they had distinct lines before, now you can see that they are being blended together. And now I'm going to go with this pencil over top of the white and make that blend just a little bit more there. I might go back to the base color and just touch it up just a little bit there. Add a little bit more just so I can have that fill in a bit. Again, come back to the colored pencil. And we're going to blend, you know, the deeper tone with the lighter tone that's sort of your mid-tone to our highlight that would be in the center here. And then once again, you have, you can see that there's sort of a gradation of tones from a deeper to a slightly lighter where the highlight is hitting to here in the center where we have our highlight hitting her lips there. Now last but not least, let's try something with the eyes on, on this particular character. So I'm going to use again my light marker here and I'm going to take the base tone for her eyes, for the base tone of the blue, and then take my blue once again, similar, very similar to what I did with the lips, and I'm going to go around the edges to make them stand out a little bit more, and also give them, you know, a bit of depth and roundness there, and have that blend in. Now you can see how the the irises, or the pupils rather, you know, have a little bit of a, of a reflection on them. If I want to make those stand out a little bit more even, there's even a lot of white inks that you can find. This one happens to be called something called Jelly Roll. So I can apply that to the black area there, and a little bit to that area there, and you can see I hope you can see how it makes, you know, the eyes sparkle a little bit and stand out a little bit more. And you can also apply that even to, you know, a portion of her lips where the lips, if the sort of, um, let's say the blue lipstick that she's wearing has a, a great deal of gloss to it. And so you can put a little bit there that there's a little bit of a re reflection off of that blue area right there. And might even put, you know, just a little bit of the white here. I might even just, you know, play around a little bit on this particular area. And add maybe just a little bit of blue to blend those in. The, the fa final part that I'll show you about is, as you can see on this, you want to put in, you know, a pretty cool background to frame it. So I chose purple 
to give it kind of a a cool tone to it. You know, we've got and what I mean by cool, like cool, like in the temperature. We've got these blue tones here that are going where the ice chips are flowing through in this area. She's got these striking blue eyes and a striking blue lips here. And so I didn't want to use a warm color. I wanted to have sort of a purplish shade that will make that sort of uh, be complementary to it. So you can see how I've done that here. So around the edges on this part, what we'll do is, I'll use this part here. I'll take, actually this is just a pretty cheap plain marker that I purchased um, at a dollar store, but it'll get the job done. You know, in the right hands, you can actually make a lot of these very simple tools, even with that Crayola, at least do some of the, the basic stuff to get the results that you want. So I'm laying down a nice, deep purple border right around here, but it's still kind of a hard edge to it. So what I'm going to do next is take another color actually as a complementary tone. So I'm going to lay down a little bit of, it's not so much pink here, but it's kind of a lavender tone here to it. So I'm going to fill in this hair right over here, or over towards the hair at this point, and coloring that in. So you can see how this is, and sometimes I might leave, I might go close to the hair sometimes, sometimes I might even leave, you know, just a little bit of white in between this base tone to just let that color of the hair stand out. So I've laid down this base tone of the pink and now I'm going to use again my purple Prismacolor or whatever kind of colored marker that or pencil that you like to use and you or I put a lot of pressure on this part here but then I'm going to sort of feather it out this way a little bit where it's going to start out very deep deep purple and then it's going to sort of slowly blend in to the other colors. So it has kind of a nice, even, or as even as you can try to make it, transition. So you can see how that's going here. I'm going to actually try and frame her hair just a little bit. So I'm going to make a dark edge, a hard dark edge here with the purple, and then blend it from this side where there's going to be, you know, a hard dark edge of the purple like we have over here. And then you have your background with not only a variety of color, but you've also got a very cool sense of depth to it, maybe even a little sense of, of shading there, a little bit of highlight there. And that is how you can get various shades of your background by using three basic techniques where you're laying down, after you do your pencils, that is, you do your inking, then you use your colored markers to lay down almost your basic primary coat, if you will, if you want to think of it that way in terms of painting. And then you use your colored pencils to touch things up and finish them off and do them other little, you know, creative touches that you'd like to use. So I'll give you a closer look here. Again, we've got our, our deep blue purple, and then I feathered it out with the colored pencil. And over here with, over here with our blue shoulder, or rather, her flesh tone shoulder here, but the other part of her arm. We did that with the light blue and then took the blue pencil and the blue pencil that we used to darken that in. We have her lips and we have her eyes. And also with the hair, you play around with it that way with various shades and tones. And there is basically the techniques that you use to come up 
with this at the very end. So again, practice with those brushes. You know, take, especially if you're a novice to working with a brush, you know, just have a lot of fun in terms of, you know, trying to, to do some things. You can even make little sections where the hair can just be jet black and just by feathering it out like that. So this is, let's say we've got, you know, somebody's head like right here. You know, we'll put a couple of eyes there. Well, you know, they're representative of eyes, but this is the top of the hair. So it's very, very flowing hair going into the background like that. So just practice with the brush with different kinds of pens and to sum up here, this was our finished drawing and you can see how we've got the hard line there and then it feathers off into this lighter area here. Here's where I left some of the paper show through here for the highlights. Um, the various striations in the hair where there's, you know, a lighter tone and a darker tone. I also did the same thing that I described over here with the sort of superpower of ice chips and everything flying with a hard blue line and then having it feather off a little bit like that. And lastly, as I said, you can use any number of white markers to add a little bit of highlight to some of these areas. And also if you make a mistake, these markers or these pencils sometimes can actually fix a mistake here. This one seems to be not be working quite as well, but take a look at this side by side. This is what would the original looked like. And this is how I've just demonstrated how these techniques work. They almost will put them side by side like that. So here's the finished piece, here's the demonstration part here, here are the two faces side by side where you can see how the eyes, how the eyes have a little bit of shape to them and the, the lips have a lot of shape to them. And then here on the shoulder where we laid down the flesh tones, the flesh tones here, a deeper flesh tone and then use your colored pencil to go over top of it. And that's how we come up with our finished product here. So that in a nutshell is how I come up with a lot of these drawings. And I experiment with a lot of different techniques. I'll give you a closer look at some of these. So there's, you know, there's her face and using a lot of other markers for the fine lines for her hair. And again, you'll see how I carried the purple all the way around this way I made the ice chips stand out actually with just a regular school highlighter to get that kind of blue so experiment with different kinds of tools that you want to use so I hope this has been helpful I hope you enjoy it you can find a lot of my artwork on various places you can find my artwork actually on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram I'm at Tim, E-S-T-I-L-O-Z, Art, on Facebook, and on Instagram, you can find me at T-I-M-E-S-T-I-L-O-Z. Follow my work on Instagram and on Twitter that way. And also, you can find my work pretty much if you do a Google search as well. So, Tim Estilos Art on Facebook, Tim Estilos on Instagram and Twitter, and on also, you'll see this instructional video on YouTube, once again, under Tim Estilos. So I hope you really enjoyed this, and I'm going to be doing some more videos like this again, some more tutorials, and I hope you'll tune in next time. So until the next time I put one of these videos together, everybody, just keep drawing, and if you want me to draw, draw something for you, I have a motto. If you can dream it, I can draw it. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye.